Hello everyone, welcome to the intro to Microsoft Spla webinar. My name is Imran Malik, I will be your host today. So I am the Microsoft Cloud Development Manager at West Coast. Uh, my details are there on the screen, so don't feel free, feel like you have to write everything down. We'll pass on the slides to you afterwards as well. So um, there's my details, email address, direct dial. So today what we have on the agenda, hopefully this won't be death by PowerPoint. To be quite informative into what Microsoft Splar is uh, to help you partners, uh, you know, develop your hosting business. So what we'll do is firstly have a quick overview, uh, you know, of Microsoft licensing, so you're familiar with uh, all the different models and to see how Splar fits into that. Uh, we'll talk about what is Splar, the uh, benefits of the program, and we'll go into a little bit of product licensing, not high level, just a quick touch into it, and then a few hosting scenarios as well. So firstly, uh, quickly talk about different types of licensing uh, with Microsoft. Surely, as partners, you are aware of some of these different programs. Uh, the first one to talk about is internal base use licensing. And that is covering uh, licensing like OEM, FPP, which is the fully packaged product, uh, traditional volume open licensing, anything from OV, OV, OVS, um, OVS, ES, so uh, your traditional uh, open licensing program. And then we have the MPSA, which was the replacement uh, from the uh, Select Plus. And then we have EA, uh, Direct with the Lars and School and Campus Agreements as well. So the good thing about this is this is all internal based licensing is where you, the partner, purchase this for your end customer and then you sell the licenses uh, to the end customer and their names are on the licensing. Uh, licenses, sorry, and they are the licensee. So there's no third party hosting rights with the exception of some products with software assurance, but I won't go into too much detail into that at the moment. Um, but you know, this is directly for the end customer on their premise and dedicated to them as well. So no third party hosting rights. Um, now where we have SPLA licensing, uh, on, the, on the other side is actually external based licensing as well. So uh, this is you guys delivering our service or a solution to the end customer. Uh, you are the licensee, not the end customer. So um, Splar is actually the end that allows for third party. Um, so you can have an environment uh, licensed under Splar, multiple customers uh, basically accessing the software on a shared infrastructure. And the only one, only licensing model that can do that is the Microsoft Splar program. So now I just want to quickly go to, to show you the two differences. Uh, uh, how they fit from internal use versus external use uh, on Splar licensing. So next slide, I just want to go over the channel models that are available as well. So as we talked about the licensing, this is exactly throughout the whole channel. Um, you may have seen the first one before with a traditional uh, channel model where you have your vendor, your distributor, your reseller, and then the end customer. And then, you know, we put license and it goes down the chain and everyone gets to add their margin on until it gets to the end customer. And then we talk about EAs, which is directly with the LARS as well. So unfortunately, distribution don't come into this model. This is uh, Microsoft to the uh, large account resellers or the large, the ASPs as they call them now, large solution providers. Um, and then they sell that to the end customer as well. Office 365. Uh, a bit more complex, the, the first uh, on the left there, the advisor model, uh, which is basically Microsoft to the end customer. And then we have the middle is the open model, which is very similar to the traditional open model from uh, Microsoft to distributor to vendor, sorry, to reseller to end customer. And then we have the new CSP model as well. So we are a tier two CSP provider and we enable partners to basically a transact uh, volume like open licensing on a per month basis as well. So those are the, the basic models which, which I just quickly wanted to go through as well. And then we have Splar as well to see how this fits. Now notice this is very similar to the traditional open model where Microsoft go through to a Splar reseller or Disty. Um, they sign us up and then we basically sign a partner up like yourselves and you become a hoster or service provider. And then uh, as you can see, it's a dotted line to the end customer. So there's no actual transaction of software, uh, licenses, media or keys. It's just an enablement of the uh, solution. So you basically sell the solution to the customer uh, and they just consume that solution. They never actually have anything to do with the software, media or keys as they would do with open licensing. So that's just a quick snapshot of how the channel models work. So I just wanted you guys to get an idea of uh, how that sits and how Splar sits within that as well. 
in terms of what is Spla, just so you guys have a understanding, I'm sure you're familiar uh, uh, of uh, you know what Spla is, but this is Microsoft definition that uh, the service provider license enables hosting providers and ISVs of a hosted offering to license Microsoft products on a monthly basis uh, to provide services and host applications to end customers. So basically, in a nutshell, that allows uh, a reseller to become a service provider or a hosting provider and then offer Microsoft products on a monthly basis to an end customer, whether you host it on your own uh, infrastructure or third-party data center or uh, on the customer side, which I'll go into in a bit more detail later on the slides. But this is just a quick snapshot of how it works. We're the distributor. We recruit you. You sign up to uh, Spline, you get access to all the software, the media and the keys when you sign up. And then you basically build off your solution and then sell it to your own customers. So that's how that works uh, in a simple format. So why hosting? So some of the key benefits of why a partner should choose Microsoft Spline licensing. So uh, one of the key factors is that uh, you actually have choice or the customer has choice. So you don't have to stick to traditional on-prem licensing if you had a offering where you needed to install some supply licensing for a temporary period of time, you could do, and you could offer a hybrid environment. So you can have a combination of open licensing uh, uh, servers with Splat on top of it, as long as you're managing the environment. So you have that flexibility. Um, you can also, once you do sign up, you also get the access to the latest and greatest um, uh, software as well. So uh, you get the current version and you have the ability to download two previous versions of the software as well. So if you wanted to downgrade or uh, you know upgrade to the current, you know you can do with a SPLA. There's no request of downgrade and licenses. You have to stick to that one. So that is a you know a great uh, a great fact and uh, a great way of partners you know accessing the uh, greatest technology or the latest uh, technology out there as well. Um, enterprise class function. Uh, uh, at the you know, fraction of the cost as well, so uh, you're not going to pay for uh, you know enterprise uh, software outright if you only want to use it for a few months. Where Spla doesn't allow for this as well, and hence why you have this uh, great uh, ability to scale up and scale down as you need. Um, as a as a you know Spla, I love you guys to always go up and scale up as much as possible, but we do realize that you know customers' choices change and you know they shift, so therefore. Uh, you may not have to have that customer or, or they may not have the same level of requirements for the software. So you can actually scale down uh, on a per month basis. So uh, you're not you're not tied in. So it does uh, you know, have a massive um, uh, cost benefit for you guys to, 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 to drive this through more of an OPEX model than, you know, going through open on a CAPEX model. Um, so is that that flexibility is there for partners to, to, to build out solutions. Um, once you start up, sign up, you do actually, there's no startup cost, there's no cancellation fees. Uh, it's a three year agreement and the uh, billing is done a monthly as well. So it's always uh, a month in arrears. So whatever you consume one month, you report the following month and then we bill you the next month after as well. So it's an incredibly uh, you know flexible payment term uh, for partners. And um, like I said, there's no startup cost and there's no cancellation fee as well. So if you want to dip your toe in the water to find out if this will work, then you know by all means, uh, you know send me some information and we'll get you uh, signed up and uh, you know possibly hosting solutions as soon as possible. Um, there is something called licensability with software assurance as well. So what that allows is uh, if a if an end customer of yours is already committed to buying, say, Open or OVS with uh, software assurance, and the customer now wants to move into a hosting environment, they can still do this uh, through licensability through SA. It just gives them the rights to use the discounted SKUs within the Microsoft uh, SPLA price list, which is about 98% discount. Uh, uh, and it's just there to stop, uh, you know, partners paying for stuff twice when they've already committed to uh, the annuity payments uh, by uh, volume licensing with SA as well. So you can only use those really incredible discount SKUs um, uh, for the duration of the software assurance on that uh, on that software you have. Um, there is an exception with SQL. Uh, SQL is the only piece of software that you can actually physically move. Um, if it's open licensing with software assurance, you can actually move it into a host environment for the duration of software assurance as well. Uh, but the others uh, where you get the discount is more in the case of uh, Exchange, uh, SharePoint, and Skype for Business as well. So if you do have customers that uh, were looking to uh, you know, move across, but they've already purchased additional licensing for maybe one, two, or three years, 
uh, then probably look at using licensability to so, uh, with software assurance to have them moved across as well. So there's another option for partners to, to get past those barriers. So we talk about you know different benefits on there, but some of the most common solutions that partners or hosting partners are using uh, is what we have here as well. And I think probably the most number one hosted workload is you know it's probably the one of the most foundational offerings uh, that uh, partners deliver as well. So uh, we look at you know web hosting, so it's the most simplest infrastructure as a service uh, that you could offer as well. And uh, secondly. Uh, what we have is uh, virtual machine hosting as well. So uh, one of the most uh, popular as well in terms of uh, you know more businesses turning to you know outsourcing providers for the infrastructure. Um, so therefore you know they need to be offering that as well. So um, if a partner or end customer sorry doesn't want to deliver their solution or host their infrastructure anymore, then uh, virtual machine hosting is definitely uh, an offering partner should be looking into on delivering as well. And we look at the likes of AWS and Azure. Uh, delivering this as well, so nothing to stop you guys from pulling this out on our, on your own offering as well. And the third actual solution we look at is probably uh, one of the most cost-effective ones is database hosting as well. So uh, we look at you know partners delivering you know mass workloads and uh, business continuity uh, for their end customers as well. And if you've seen the price of SQL. Uh, through traditional volume licensing, then uh, you'd be shocked by looking at how much it costs through uh, pleasantly shocked, sorry, uh, or pleasantly surprised uh, in looking at it through uh, SPLAR licensing as well. Uh, like I said, there's all those benefits. You don't own it, you're just renting it, and it's uh, changing that CapEx uh, to an OpEx spend for your customer base, and they still get the enterprise class functionality on there as well. The last two on there, desktop hosting, application hosting. Um, you know, you've probably seen this before with the likes of you know Office 365 as well. Uh, and as a partner, you may not think how you can compete, but if you were to build a bespoke niche solution uh, using this, you could actually build up your own Office 365 solution or call it Office 366 if you wanted to, and you can deliver that to your own customers as well. So those are the most commonly used ones uh, as we partners at Microsoft C, but uh, like I said before, there's no limitations to this. You could actually Build it out, you know, on on the request of your customer needs. So you know, it's not a vanilla offering like Office 365, where they tell you what level of functionality they have on each of the products. You can actually build this up to exactly how you want and deliver it how you want as well. So that bespoke niche offering for end customers, uh, maybe you know, is a massive requirement uh, for your uh, customer base as well. I want to go over the program and benefits because uh, I'm waffling on in terms of uh, some of the other benefits and uh, some of the licensing and solutions. But as once you once you do sign up, I think it's important for every partner to know that there are some massive benefits that you should be able to take advantage of and utilize as well. So um, what you what you have here is evaluation and test period. So you have 90 days free internal evaluation and testing, uh, free of charge, so you don't actually have to be charged for that. So um, if you are building out a solution, say a SQL database solution, or an infrastructure service, or a combination of both, and it's a non-live environment, you can actually build that on your in your environment, uh, you know, free of charge and test it up, uh, test it for up to the 90 days uh, before we start charging you with that as well. As soon as it goes live, you'll have to charge for you as well. But also um, after the evaluation and testing period, you have you have the ability to offer 60 day free trials uh, to your customers as well. Uh, so uh, as long as you're not charging them, we won't charge you as well. So effectively, you can actually have five months of using the software completely free of charge and your customers can use it free of charge for two months as well. So it is a fantastic opportunity there just to understand how that works. Um, we also have some demo labs as well, so a demo, a demo environment as well. So if you have uh, a lab in-house, you know, in then you can actually build a, you know, some of the applications on there or solutions to up to 50 users as well, so free of charge for the duration of your agreement. So there's never any charge on that. So there has to be a lab on your premise, not a customer site. Um, if you're to offer 
uh, partner uh, Spla and they work with a third party data center. You can allow up to 20 administrators on this data center to provision your licenses as well. So you can give them access and that'll be by signing an outsourcer agreement. Uh, it's just a simple addendum on top of the contract as well. So we can go through that as well. So we all know that some of your end customers may not be working with you, but working with other third party providers, but you still want to offer them services, uh, then you can do uh, and you know, you can allow for uh, the technicians to access your software and provision it for you as well. Um, there is a question around about internal use based licensing. Um, we do get asked the question quite a lot. So, uh, in a nutshell, you can only use it internally if you're selling it and you can only use half of it. So, it's called the 50% internal use rights. So, if you're not selling it to your customers, you won't be able to use it um, and you have to pay for it as well. Uh, it's not free of charge and um, so basically you can only use 50%. So if you're selling 100 office licenses uh, to across all your customers across the board uh, as an internal hosting provider or service provider, you can only use 50 internally and you'd have to pay for them as well. So that's how the 50% use rights uh, works on that as well. I wanted to go over the uh, tier model as well. I know we uh, we saw the channel models before. Uh, this is how the single tier model for Spla works as well. So I'm just just so you as a partner understand the relationships involved and uh, the requirements from each as well. So as you can see, that you know Microsoft and ourselves at the Spla of Disty have a reporting and invoicing relationship. And we have a reporting and invoicing relationship with yourself as a service provider. And then you actually have a contractual relationship with Microsoft. So we help you sign that contract and the actual terms and conditions are directly with yourselves on Microsoft. And as you can see that you are the licensee. So uh, the end customer uh, is not the licensee, you're the licensee. So you have end user license terms uh, with the end customer and you also have a reporting relationship with your customer as well. So you manage your end customer, the solutions, uh, and you control the licenses as well. So, um, one of the questions I get asked about, you know, quite a lot is, you know, why is the server the licensee? So, under the terms of the agreement, uh, you're managing uh, the environment. You have to have day-to-day -day, uh, management of the servers, uh, and your end customer just consumes a solution. If you give your end customers uh, access uh, to full access to the servers, and they provision you, uh, you know, licenses. Uh, users for RDS, for example, uh, Office, uh, you know, so forth. Then within your three-year agreement, Microsoft do have the right to audit you. And if they found that you know these uh, uh, licenses and provisions and use has not been reported, uh, the liability falls to you guys as well. So you'd be responsible to pay that, not the end customer. So that's why you have to have full control over it because you're the licensee. So in terms of how the contract works, so uh, firstly we have uh, the MBSA, which is the Microsoft Business and uh, Services Agreement, which is your overall umbrella perpetual agreement to sign other agreements like MPSA, Select Plus, and SPLAS on there as well. And so you have those two uh, to sign, and then underneath that you have the signature form. Uh, basically, uh, these are the first two are the terms and conditions. Uh, the other one is a signature form, and you also have the end user license terms as well on the left there. So you get four pieces of document uh, initially uh, once you do sign up. Um, the actual contract is sent to you digitally now through our electronic agreement tool, so there's no actual paper copies for us to send, but you can actually download the physical uh, digital paper copies as well for your own record so you can review the contracts. And I highly recommend any partner signing up to review the contract as well. Um, you not only, well, once you do sign up, sorry, you do actually have a corporate agreement, um, but you also have the ability to sign an uh, academic agreement, which is the Qualified Educational User, which is the QEU, uh, and then you also have a option to sign a GSPA agreement as well. So. Uh, just firstly on the academic agreement, uh, this is around about 85% discount of the corporate as well and the academic agreement covers educational institutes and it also covers uh, charities and non-profits as well. So uh, if you're looking to sell that, uh, if you're looking to or are selling in that vertical, then you know obviously you know it'd be an opportunity for you guys to, to sell uh, Microsoft Blind and deliver that solution to them. Um, 
if you're selling to government organizations as well, uh, basically you can sign up a GSPLA alongside uh, your corporate as well and also alongside your academic. And uh, I think the discounts are on about 30%, 33% off uh, corporate. And that's changing in April 2017, which will be dropped down to 25% off uh, discount off corporate as well. So the discounts are reducing year on year for GSPLA, but they are addendums you can actually sign alongside your corporate as well if you're looking to offer not just the corporate agreement but you want to do academic charity or government supplier as well in terms of reporting um as a partner you're required to report a monthly use report uh, each month uh, by the 10th of the following month as well so as i mentioned before reporting is done a month in arrears so whatever reports my partners are now uh, are, are, you know are you have used in november so for example um, they will report to me uh, by the 10th of December. So it's always reported uh, in the following month, no later than the 10th. And then we submit that usage to Microsoft uh, and then we invoice for you as well accordingly. Um, as, a, as a brand new partner, you do have the ability to uh, report zero usage for the first six months. <clears throat> and then after six months, Microsoft minimum terms are that on the seventh month onwards, you have to be reporting a minimum of 85 pounds Otherwise, the, they will probably terminate your agreement if you're not uh, hitting that minimum amount. So that's not our terms and conditions, that's Microsoft there and then. If you have a customer that's spending over $1,000, which is around about 632 or 652 pounds, uh, and then we will need to basically uh, set up a end user enrollment for them as well, uh, as required by Microsoft. And uh, lastly on that, the country of usage uh, has to be provided as well. So wherever the end user is located. So, so with Splar, as long as you have management of the servers, uh, either on site or remotely, you know, you could be delivering solutions uh, in the US or in Ireland or across Europe as well and license your Splar. Uh, license for your supply UK uh, license as well. So that's just a quick uh, roundup of how the reporting works as well. So I just want a quick overview of what we talked about today. So um, the supplier, you know, the rights to provide software services uh, to third parties. Uh, so you deliver that solution to them. It's a three year agreement. Uh, the actual licenses are non perpetual. Um, and uh, there's no upfront commitment uh, when you do sign up and there's no cancellation fees. Flexibility, uh, I'd like to say it's a pay-as-you provision model, so it's not as you pay as you go. If you provision a server and only half the end customers access it for that month, then you still have to pay for the full amount as well. So I'd like to say pay-as-you provision model instead of pay-as-you-go. Uh, monthly software usage reports, we get access to the latest and greatest software. Uh, we've got some licensing models which I'll talk about in the next couple of slides as well and uh, also price increases as well will be coming up. Uh, just so you're aware, a uh, price increase will uh, happen on the 1st of January uh, every year. This year is going to increase by 13% across the board uh, and uh, for partners already signed up, they actually do have the price list as well and we get the price list a month before uh, the month, uh, the usage month so we send them out in plenty of time as well. Um, also, you know, like we said, all the products are downloaded from the VLSC. Uh, we have existing, uh, you know, program documents which we'll send to you uh, upon signing as well. And uh, there's a guide on uh, Microsoft uh, Spla, the user, the reseller guide on Explore as well. So, uh, any information, I'll send. I've got some resources uh, and some links at the end of this presentation as well. So, uh, as the uh, curtain opens. As we can see, how simple it is uh, for a partner like yourself to become a service provider. We sign you up. Uh, as a partner, we just need some basic details, uh, like MPN number, uh, who is a signatory, and as long as you've got a trading account at West Coast, then you're fine. And then um, as soon as you sign up, take about 48 hours, uh, you'll get the software. And uh, as soon as you access it, you can build out your solutions. You know, host it, test it, uh, offer a 60 day free trial to your customers. Uh, and then once uh, they're ready to pay and you're ready to pay and you've gone through, you start reporting your usage to the West Coast. And uh, that's pretty much how it works. So it's a very simple process. Uh, pretty much uh, that's, that clipboard says it all in a nutshell, really. So I want to go through a little bit of product licensing as well, not too much. So just so you uh, so you're all aware of how this works. Um, so under the SPLA program, there are three basic licensing models. 
Uh, there's the subscribe access licensing model, which is the SAL, which is uh, a familiar term in terms of uh, volume. So if you were familiar with volume, then you know there's the COW. So you have uh, device COWs and user COWs. Under SPLA, it's SALs. And it's basically, it's required for each individual user uh, to access the software. So Office is a SAL because it's an application. Uh, Exchange, uh, SharePoint Link, uh, they're all SAL based licensing. So it's all done on a per user basis. Um, and not all the products are done on sales, and when they have processor based licensing uh, and core based licensing as well. So, if you're familiar with SQL, uh, then you can understand that you know SQL is under the core based licensing and it's a minimum of four cores. And if you're familiar with Windows Server licensing and System Center, then you can see it's under processor licensing model as well. Uh, the good thing about these processor and core based licensing is that you don't actually need uh, individual user sales. Uh, for the actual license. So each license does allow for unlimited users to access the software. So the SPLA licensing is a lot more simplified. You just license from the ground up to physical, and then you don't need any additional uh, sales uh, per application. So uh, basically, you don't need any Windows user sales. There's no uh, Exchange server license, and then Exchange server sales on top of that as well. It's either one or the other, and it's pretty transparent on the process as well. Uh, the processor license, I have to say, is being phased out uh, because of Windows Server 2016 now. So that's all moving to core-based licensing. Um, and we'll talk about that in the next couple of slides and how that's changing, how that works as well. So that's just a quick snapshot of the three licensing models under the SPLAR program. The SPAR, uh, if you're not familiar with this, this is the SPLAR product use price document. But this pretty much tells you uh, all the rights on how you can actually use all the products and what the what the rights are for all the applications and the server licenses under the SPLAR program as well. So it talks about uh, downgrade rights, um, you know, also disaster recovery rights for Windows Server, uh, what you can and cannot do, and also you know passive failover rights for SQL uh, under the SPLAR program as well. So this is really useful document for every SPLA partner to have and it gets released every every set well actually there was an error there it's actually released every month now um, basically um, as a it was done every quarter but you'll get one uh, every month and your license rights actually fall onto the month on which you um, which you set up as well so uh, you can actually you're governed by the rights of the software on the month you've actually set up your SPLA agreement as well. So as you can see, there's some information which on what it covers as well, and the different types of licensing terms. Um, but uh, you know, following on from this, if you wanted to have a look at the SPLA, you can actually download it yourself from Microsoft website, free of charge. Just uh, do a Bing search for it, and you can actually uh, locate that. Or if you wanted to request them, we could actually send it to you as well. So as I mentioned before, Windows Server licensing or Windows Server 2016 licensing, uh, this has now changed as of 1st of October. So it was traditionally on the processor model. And if you're familiar with Open, it was uh, 16 cores. Uh, but under SPLA, it's a single proc license. So therefore, it's, it's an eight core minimum. So every single processor you have has an eight core minimum uh, requirement on it. And as you can see, the eight cores is the same as a single processor license under the SPLA program. So uh, data center we have here, which is, you know, as you can see, unlimited VMs uh, and unlimited uh, server containers as well. So uh, this is really for more of a highly virtualized environment, probably eight VMs or more uh, going into that to that bracket, and then Windows Server Standard, um, as you can see, you, know, you only get one VM uh, or one Hyper-V container alongside that, uh, but you know, it has unlimited Windows Server container as well, and it's still the same licensing model. Um, it's eight cores per uh, processor is the same price, so uh, I believe these come in two core packs as well, so you need uh, four of those SKUs <clears throat> as a minimum as well, so if you have a, if you have a processor with 10 cores, then Obviously, you need to license accordingly uh, on that, but anything with eight cores or less will still have to be licensed with eight cores. As you can see here, how this works in terms of uh, four core, four or less, uh, six uh, and then eight, as you can see, uh, they still need to be licensed with a minimum of eight cores. Uh, one thing I want to go through is on the next slide is licensing Windows Server standard um, uh, virtual instances. So uh, traditionally, you get one instance uh, per, <coughs> per processor or per eight cores. Uh, but if you actually need to spin up another VM, um, data center 
is basically unlimited. Windows Server Standard is not. So the way it works is every time you spin up a VM, you have to relicense all the total number of cores uh, within that server again. So if you have one processor with eight cores, uh, and then you're licensing it with eight core licenses, that's fine, and you get one VM. If you spin up another VM, you have to license another eight cores, so that's 16 cores uh, in total, that's fine. If you spin up another VM, that's three VMs, and that's uh, eight, 16, 24 cores you have to license on that uh, processor. So that's how that works in terms of spinning up VMs on Windows Server Standard. SQL, on the other hand, is a uh, uh, is a beast on its own as well. So uh, under the Splat program, we have four different products on there as well. We have uh, Enterprise, uh, Business Intelligence Server, Standard, and Web. Uh, SQL Web is only is, uh, is only available through Splat now. So I think they changed that a couple of years ago. <clears throat> and uh, it's uh, it's a very popular product which most partners uh, will use for a web face interface uh, for their solution. Uh, but Enterprise is you know core based licensing, uh, you know high end data center. Uh, licensing you go along it, you can spin up uh, unlimited, uh, you know, SQL uh, uh, databases on there as well. Um, and then we have SQL Standard as well. So SQL Standard is the only product that has two different licensing models. So you can have it on a sal based model, or you can have it on the core based model as well. So um, rule of thumb is, you know, if you have SQL with minimal four cores and you want to compare that to Standard, uh, if you have 20 users on Standard, then anything 20 or over would be best on core. Anything under 20 will be best on the sound model as well. So that's how we work that out in terms of the, the cost benefit uh, to deliver SQL standard. So as I said before, it's a minimum four cores, and you can see the core factor table there as well. So uh, you know, if it's a single core processor, you still need to license by four cores. If it's a dual core processor, you still need to license two products on that as well. So it's two licenses, so it's still four cores on there as well. So uh, that's how SQL works uh, in terms of the core-based licensing. Um, you can stick SQL standard on a VM as well, so uh, it's probably one of the most popular solutions to deliver on there as well. So core-based licensing works on there. So with a VM, you need to find out how many virtual CPUs uh, are assigned to that VM, and it's still a minimum of four cores as well. So uh, as you can see, VM1, uh, two virtual cores, still need four core licensing. VM2, Four virtual cores still need four. VM three six, you actually need six base licensing as well. Um, please be careful that when you do this, uh, when you are spinning up a VM, the hyper threading is not switched on. If it is, then uh, you know each of those threads will count as a, a virtual core uh, or a, a virtual CPU. So therefore, your core count will go up as well. So that's me coming to the end of the presentation. So uh, that's. Um, Pretty much how Splar works in a nutshell. I didn't want to get into too much in-depth licensing, so if you have any more information or questions, then feel free to message me. But there are some useful links here. Uh, there's some training portal from Microsoft, the uh, Splar training portal, and there's the Spur uh, link for from Microsoft to download, and there's also the hosting lounge as well. So have a look at these. Uh, the training portal has got some fantastic videos on there as well. Uh, it's got a lot more high-level licensing knowledge on there as well. But any questions, like I said, that you have that you need to answer, then I'm more than happy to help as your uh, Splar distributor. So thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate that, and you have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.